God bless football. Chris Cody? God bless <laughs> football, Mikey A? God, God bless football, Stugatz? Why are you asking Mikey A? Like, Mikey A is a staple to the show. You are not. That's oh, why you, I did it that way. You said it to me with a question <laughs> right. mark. I thought that's just how we passed the buck along here. Uh, that You're is not how, Billy. Right? <laughs> I'm not Billy. <laughs> Billy is, uh, he's in jury duty. That can't be true. He's been summoned to jury duty, and you guys were talking right before we came on the air that you would not want Billy to be someone who was, <laughs> if you were in trouble and in court, you would not want Billy to be a part of the jury. Is that is that fair? Usually when I look yeah. at somebody, I can tell whether you're someone who would love jury duty or would love to get out of jury duty. And Billy <laughs> is in this weird space where I can't, I don't know. Is right. he someone who loves jury duty or is he trying to get out of this thing? Uh, I'm not certain. I don't, I don't know that I don't want Billy on my jury. The question is, if I did it, I, I, if the evidence is overwhelming yeah. against me, I want Billy there because he's going to poke and prod right. to find a way to be a contrarian. He would ask a lot of questions, but just not helpful yeah. for the case. So if it's a slam sure. dunk that you're guilty, Mikey, yeah, you're telling me Billy's going to find a way for you to be innocent? That's yep. not what you want out of yep. a juror? I mean, what is that? Why not? <laughs> I'm trying to get off here. <laughs> oh. So how does this show work? You just talk a bunch of football? This sounds amazing. Yeah, we talk about football. That's oh, what we do. God bless it. Oh. Yep, we yeah. God bless football. Uh, uh, Lucy's going to join us to talk some college football because college football, the second the NFL kicks off on Sunday, you have an epic game, Washington and Oregon, it gets buried. Yeah. It's done. By Monday, college football has been flushed out of your system. Uh, probably a better right. slate than NFL because uh, we had some fun with the NFL yesterday, but yes. in terms of marquee matchups there wasn't yep. a lot to offer us i mean nance was calling patriots at raiders uh i know that's sad and <laughs> that we'll get to we'll get to belichick because <laughs> belichick belichick's done like i'm gonna like i'm calling oh, it right now we're here belichick is done but we will get to that okay. in just a second okay because you're right about that chris you had the big game oregon and washington a classic game in college football yeah and we'll talk about that with lucy but in the nfl you did have a few major upsets yesterday yes you had the Jets beating the Eagles. You had the Browns beating the 49ers. It was a great day in terms of NFL football. Well, yesterday was a great day. I mean, those two teams specifically just winning with just terrible offenses. Right. Like, I mean, it, I mean, it's, I know it's it's obvious at this point, but the Jets and Browns defenses, it's all the Dolphins have to worry about at this point. I mean, we were just talking off air how all the, yeah. the good AFC teams are kind of, there's some holes you can poke in almost every AFC team, but the Jets and Browns defenses are crazy. Yeah, they're really good. Um, How do you feel as a Dolphins fan? Uh, I would say that you care about the Dolphins more than anyone on on our show. I appreciate that. I mean, you do. I, I, especially on air, we do have a bunch of diehards all behind the scenes, right? But on air, I would I would agree with you. They're my team. Um, every Dolphins fan today is doing the wasn't worried down in fourteen nothing thing. Yeah, I'm calling BS on that. Yeah, right. I mean, I'm gonna do it too. I'm gonna sit here and and, and I did, I wasn't worried, Mikey. A. Were you worried for me? Down 14, uh, no, I, I, I wasn't worried for you. No. I wasn't worried for you at all. <laughs> Just like I wasn't worried when the Jets were down 14-3. Right. I was like, we got this. Uh, can you put what that on a ball? Were you worried for Chris when the Dolphins were down 14 to nothing in the first quarter to Carolina? I was. The only thing that made me a little worried, did you see the play the Dolphins had on third and one early in that game? They tried to get too cute. They like tried to throw the ball backwards. Right. It was third and short. You just run the ball. It's it's actually if there is a weakness for this Dolphins team, it's short yardages. Like they don't really. Maybe Jeff Wilson can come back and help. Look at me breaking down Dolphins I love it. running no, back. Yeah. It's God bless football. I, right, sorry, yeah. sometimes I feel weird. We're talking about in, football. It's getting okay. in the nuts yes. and bolts. Right. But that play was just one of the worst plays ever. But overall, I mean, yeah, dude. What can I say? This Dolphins team. What what stat can I read to you? I have millions of stats here that are just saying how great this Dolphins offense okay, is. Okay, we'll get to him. Just hold on a second, though. You were not nervous. Like, 14 nothing. it's Carolina. You're not, Thielen's having a game. You're not, you're not nervous. I looked at them live to bet them, and they were still minus 190. Right. Down 14 nothing. Right. I was like, it's not even juicy enough for me to take. <laughs> I wanted to jump in because I still felt like they were going to win, but it, the number, Vegas was still telling you down 14 nothing. This is a huge favor in this game. All right, so you're confident. Chris. Right. Go ahead, Mike. Chris. Not for nothing against the Panthers. That's when you try the cute things. That's yeah. where you try. Hey, let's see if we can't throw it back and then throw it right. It is true. And then throw it down the field. That's when you do it. But you, you don't do it against yeah. the Chiefs. I feel like you want to save that stuff for like the, the the Germany game or the Eagles. Like, why are we busting out this trick play? Now it didn't even work. So now it was whatever, man. I, I, I'm nitpicking. 
It's gotten to the point where there's nothing bad to say about this Dolphins team, so right. I'm just like reaching at straws for something negative. I, to say. I could say the most positive thing about the Dolphins. This is someone who is not a Dolphin fan. Okay, I'm a Jets fan. We'll get to them in a second. Okay, but. I had a large, my biggest bet yesterday was on the Dolphins. Yes. The Dolphins at home have been money all season. Yeah. They blow teams out at home. And I am telling you, down 14 to nothing. And I had the Dolphins minus 13 and a half. I bought it down for 14. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I didn't need it. No. <laughs> I know. But it's just, it always makes you feel good when you buy down that hook. Uh, Mike, yeah, I can tell you. I was not nervous for a single second. Even watching them go down 14 to nothing and really being down 27 and a half to nothing on my bet, I was not nervous at all. That's wild. And that is, that's ins- that See? is when you have a good football You're team. You're flying by yes. the Dolphins fans who weren't ner- <laughs> worried about winning the game. You weren't worried about covering your bet down 14 nothing. I was, no, I was down 27 and a half to nothing. And I was not sweating it at all. To your point, the, Dolph- all. the Dolphins are on their best home stretch. 17 games. They're 15 and two the last two years. Right. That's, I know. I, that, where does that come from? Where does this all come from? I don't know. <laughs> well, Tua and McDaniel. Diehards like you, Chris. Yeah. This is just <laughs> a field advantage. Dude, because right. this is, uh. if you look at this team, this the offensive stats, we've seen some good offenses in years past. The Cowboys have had good offenses. Right. But the Dolphins are leading in rushing and passing. I, I, I crunched the numbers on you this did. Dugats. Yeah. Well, hold on a second, because, okay. you know, usually when Billy perks up, okay, yeah. Mikey A and I know this, we just, we go to Billy. Because it means he's interested in something. Yeah. It means he's hot on something. It's never stats. Yeah. And it's certainly never Dolphin stats. Yeah. This is weird, Mikey, eh, to have someone who cares about football in here. I mean, I know. <laughs> it's crazy. Because all Billy cares about is sending a. I mean, that's I, it. I just wanted to look up how, like what other offenses have led the league in both. And there's never been. The Cowboys in recent years had like the second in passing, ninth in rushing. Right. The Cardinals with Kurt Warner, second in passing, eighth in rushing. Sure. We haven't seen a team lead in both rushing and passing since like the eighties. Right. Like it's just the it's Dolphins crazy. are yeah. doing it. It's not like they're just the best offense. They're the best offense we've seen in decades. No doubt. It's just, I don't know what the, I, I'm You're so giddy. happy. You're so happy. I didn't even think this was possible a couple years ago. Do you have more stats for us? Like, I mean, I have the dolphin. There's only four teams in NFL history that have accumulated 7,000 yards. It's only happened four times ever through this point in the season yes right. no no no. total, oh, for, total. The, for the entire for, for, for season, the entire season dolphins okay. are, and the dolphins are on pace for 8400 yards all right mikey <laughs> if 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 you're an nfl coach if you're a football coach what you want to do right now is you want to find some way to get low down on mike mcdaniel's staff because it's going to be the sean mcfay treatment oh, soon. yeah anybody yeah. who had a cup of coffee with sean mcfay was getting a head coaching job right mike mcdaniel's about to get the same treatment wow and so how does that work who's, who's so you, you just find mike you you you, you know you find hopefully mike you get a cup of coffee invite you get him for a cup of coffee and you job. get a job <laughs> you get a head coaching job it's amazing oh, man. <laughs> I, think, I think you're right it's just way. so good right now it's <laughs> just and then jalen ramsey's ahead of schedule i could go on forever right no you're getting but this is yeah. all setting up too nicely for you it is i, I feel like <laughs> something has oh, there's something, a crash coming there's some, a crash coming right. there's a concussion in our future or something uh, no. no don't say that take it back i'm not saying not i'm just Tua. you didn't mean to no, tell no, i'm you just saying somebody else injuries right? and just right. like i'm scared because right. this is too perfect right now uh, you don't how, want to peak in october how long have you been a dolphin fan your entire, My entire life? life is this the uh the most excited you've been since you've uh since you've easy <laughs> since you've been a dolphin fan by far this is the best team you've seen as a dolphin fan. 10 times yeah the the, be, the the next best feeling i've had as a dolphin right fan. because you know it feels like something's off a little bit in buffalo they you know eke out a victory over the giants it feels like the afc is really that, setting up nicely and i'll tell you what chris it like to me this is what it feels like if the dolphins have home field advantage in the afc play if they're the one seed no one's beating them I don't care if it's Kansas City. I don't care who comes down to Miami to play this team. If they're playing you at home, they're going to beat you. I don't think they're going to lose a game at home this year. How about that? I mean, see, you're, 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 this guy gets it. I said they wouldn't lose. I, I said they might not lose at home until Christmas. Right. Remember, remember I was mocked a few weeks ago? Yes. Remember a few weeks ago, I was like, they won't lose on American. So they did lose to the Bills. Right. So that kind of went away. Right. But it's just, dude, yes. The, the answer to your question is yes. Is yes. <laughs> I didn't ask a question. I mean, I mean. It's just the Dolphins. <laughs> they're, 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 everyone, all the Dolphins fans in the control studio, they agree with me. They're just like, yes. Uh, do you guys agree? Yes. yes. Uh, but I didn't ask a question. That's do you guys it. agree? Hold on. Do you agree that I didn't ask a question? 
Yeah. No. <laughs> Debatable, they're saying. Wow. <laughs> Mikey, did I ask a question? Oh. I don't remember a question. I was just into the whole football talk. I was excited. I know. Listen, it's early, it's early evening, early afternoon. It's early. Uh, <laughs> and you know what I'm enjoying? Early. You know what I'm enjoying more? Not more than this Dolphins thing what? is the Patriots just being terrible. Right. And once a week, we get Belichick we spiking something. Yeah. Give me it all. Put it in my veins. I got to tell you, this is when you know it's over. When you are losing to Josh McDaniel Oof. and Brian Hoyer, Oof. and you're doing so in embarrassing fashion. Oof. And then here's the other thing. When your most loyal soldier, <laughs> Teddy Brisky, oh, no. is he? ripping you on a pregame show. Did he do it? He did. Did he fire him? He said, Bill has made this all about Bill and not about the team. Wow. Uh, Brisky, has, he's never said a bad word about Belichick. Ever. I was shocked. It's... I had to rewind it to make sure it was true. Oh, I mean, nothing put a smile on my face than s- when they were going for this, like the option style offense. Yeah. With the, the, this quarterback that's not a quarterback. Right. It's just so good. <laughs> How about that cover if you had the Raiders? Oh. Which, which I did. <laughs> Safety on the final play of the that's game. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was great. I love Mac Jones. Don't you dare bench Mac Jones, Bill Belichick. <laughs> He's so weird. He, he just like Mike Mac Jones is just like in out in out. He has nothing. He has no answers right now. Bill Belichick. Oh, his team stinks. I know it's great. It's it's and that's on Belichick. I mean, it's on nobody else but Belichick. Uh, seriously, I know. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's, the Brady not being there doesn't yeah. help. Well, that's on Belichick for running him out of town. Well, he's old. No, he ran him out of town. He won a Super Bowl after he ran him out of town, and then he drafted Mac Jones. All that's on Bill Belichick. You got to have answers. You got to be ready. He wasn't ready for life after Brady. Yeah, I, but I think the larger point is he never should have been in such a hurry to get rid of Tom Brady. They won a Super Bowl, Chris. The Bucks did. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I just I see Belichick spiking a tablet in my dreams. <laughs> it's what my dreams look like. What was it last week? It was the challenge flag. They just spike something different every week. I love it so much. All right, we'll talk uh, college football with Lucy next. Chris, you know the other thing I was thinking. I was I was thinking about you a lot yesterday. Thank you. It's weird. <laughs> You're welcome. It's nice. <laughs> well, I was. I like being thought about. I was I was thinking about yeah. you. All right. I thought about you some during the Jets game. You didn't think about me. I was like three and three. Not right. terrible. Well, Got a, I was like, really? Stu gonna be doing the thing. Right. Got a shot. We do have a shot. I mean, <laughs> we're in the mix. <laughs> Mikey, do you feel like we're in the mix, the Jets? We are in the mix. Yeah. We are absolutely By in the definition. Mix. We're in the mix. Um, yeah. Why were you thinking about me? I was thinking, of, thank you for reminding <laughs> me. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking about you because I, you guys have the Eagles this weekend. Yeah. You being the Dolphins. Biggie. And so I was, and now there's a little juice off of that game because, you know, the Jets, the Jets beat the Eagles. And so I'm wondering. Maybe the you, blueprint. Oh, I think Chris wanted Mikey. I think he wanted the Eagles all to himself. He wanted the Dolphins to be the team that you know handed Philadelphia their first loss of the year at Philadelphia, by the way. Mm. And now he's been stripped of that opportunity. I was happy and for now, Mercury Morris. I, well, yep. The Dolphins are cracking open the champagne <laughs> <laughs> very early in the season, by the way. Yeah. Uh, but I was I was thinking you wanted that game because now you have the Eagles coming off a loss, an angry, focused Eagles team. You know, I just think that it's still a test for the Dolphins, whether the Eagles are five and one or six and oh. So I don't think I really wasn't living and dying okay, by that. And right. they're, they're not in our conference. If Like, you know, the Chiefs, I want to lose because of the conference schedule. So I wasn't really I still think it's a test for the Dolphins because the Dolphins schedule, you could say say what you want about how good the offense has been. Their, their record, the, the records of the teams they've beaten. Not great so far. So outside of the Bills who they lost to. They, they, they need to have an impressive win. So I'm excited for this, and I think that they can get it because the, the who have the Eagles beat uh, sound? Is that how we say it? Do you beat Beaten? someone sound? I don't know. Who have they beat well? Like, they, like they've played every – it feels like even the teams they play that are bad, like the Jets, not, not to be a jerk, but it just seems well, like they play – you're being a jerk. They I play mean. close games against well, everybody. Well, so I'm just I, – I, I, I feel like it's a good test for the Dolphins because I think they can go and pass the test. The Eagles have beaten the uh, the Patriots. They have beaten the Vikings. They've beaten the Bucks. They've beaten the Commanders. They've beaten the Rams. You're right. And they lost to the Jets. And it's a lot of close games. It's just the Eagles are good. I'm not disrespecting them. That offensive line is legit. We're going to get to a real test for the defensive line because the Dolphins' defensive line has been solid. They've been getting sacks 
So we'll see if they can do it against Jason Kelsey. Jason Kelsey, by the way. Yeah. Can I go on a little rant, a little Jason Kelsey rant? Please do. You're tired of him? It, yeah. I'm a little tired of it because everyone's doing the thing now where it's, I'm a Jason Kelsey guy. Yeah. He's the one. Hey, as somebody who is as average, and give me this, people. I'm average looking, okay? Mm, mm. I don't like it when people are condescending towards and, and, and build up an average looking person. Right. They're doing this thing with Jason Kelsey now where they yes. want to have the hot take of, He's the one I like. Right. And it's like. Can I tell you, my wife is guilty of this. You're being condescending. Yes. You're being condescending. Tell my wife to shut up. Go it's ahead. It's just like, yeah. it, it's it's insincere. You're trying to do the trendy thing of being into the guy. Right. That nobody, like, I like this guy because everyone likes the other one. Mm-hmm. I see, I'm on to you people. All right. <laughs> no, say it to Abby. I, I like just say that, it to her. I like yeah. Jason Kelsey as right. much as the next guy. Right. But he's being hyped up too much during right. all this Kelsey stuff. Right. Both Kelseys. I'm, you know what? I'm taking the hot take. I'm tired of all the Kelseys. Wow. Most people are just tired of Travis. I'm tired of both of them. Put it on the poll. You're tired of the Kelseys. Kelsey too? Yeah. Well, now, Donna Kelsey, I, that's the one I'm most tired of. Yeah. I mean, Jesus. I mean, Stu Gats can say it. I mean, I, this is, <laughs> he's not wrong. <laughs> Look at me, Louie. Look at oh, me, Luis. Oh, God. My wife is, I find my wife doing the same thing with Jason Kelsey. He's a center. Right. Uh, he's a center and he's for likeable, crying out loud. Fine, likable enough. Oh, super likable. Just, I love the guy. But it's just people are just flying by, like, just like, oh, he's the uh, he's the one I would choose. It's like, you're just saying that. Now, this is what happens when you put people all over the place, yes. okay? And you never stop talking about it. It's gonna ha- I'm telling you right now, it's going to happen. If it hasn't happened already to Pat McAfee, it's going to happen, yeah. okay? Yeah. It's going to happen. It's what happened with Deion Sanders. Saturday Night Live, I mean, 60 Minutes went to see him. And now Saturday Night Live is doing sketches on Deion Sanders. It's like Keenan, not a great impression of it, it but it it was still funny. Like the the writing was good on it. The impression could have been better. Right. Chris, to your point, do you know how insulting it is to be an offensive lineman, a big man with a beard, and everybody's talking about how attractive that one is? That's what I'm saying. Do you understand? I'm like, that's what I mean. No, 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 no. It's condescending. Because nobody's fawning over me here. I know that. But like, Exactly. Everybody's oh Jason Kelsey, yeah, I prefer no you don't. It's too you much for Travis. It's too much exactly. It's just Stop like they're they're, they're flying by and they're just like, I'm on to you people. You don't all believe what you're saying right here. Right. But fame does make you a little bit more attractive, does it not? Sure. I mean, right. And why do you think I do this show? <laughs> <laughs> I was watching not that kind of <laughs> fame. <laughs> you, you know how we have a weird type of fame, Mikey. <laughs> I know our fame is weird. It's just a bunch of bros. <laughs> you know how you know how it, well, whenever there's an offensive line that jumps, Jesus. you know how that when there, there's an offensive lineman that jumps, you'll see seven defensive linemen point. Yeah, of course. And they get the flag. Right. I think defenses should practice doing this uh-huh. when there's not a penalty on an offensive lineman. You just say, okay, this Great third point. down play, we're all going to with six seconds left point on the play the clock, point at the right tackle. Because I feel like a referee right. who sees seven defensive players pouring at a right tackle is just going to assume they're they're not going to assume that they planned this out. They're going to mm-hmm. be like, "Oh my god, I must have missed something." Flag on the play, boom! Right. You can't review a penalty. <laughs> I'm just saying it's one of those things you bust out. You save it for the most important time of the season. But I think if it's executed perfectly, I think you could draw a penalty. I think you could fool these refs. That's what Omaha means. There you, you go, go Omaha, and well, then everybody point, knows to point to the right tackle. <laughs> Let's do that today. Wait. At some point this week on the main Levitard show, can right. we just point to someone at some during the show randomly and scare them? Sure. If seven people pointed to me in the middle of the show, I would just <laughs> I would I would freak out. <laughs> I felt like seven people have been pointing at me in the middle of a show. <laughs> and all seven are Levitard. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It's a weird feeling. It is weird. What else got you in the NFL yesterday? It was it was kind of a low scoring day. It was an interesting day though because you had those two upsets. That was the uh, that was the. But you're right. There is no there. There doesn't appear. Maybe it's the Dolphins. There doesn't appear to be a dominant team. Yeah. The, even the Chiefs are right. not as good as the Chiefs have been yeah. in years past. I mean, I still think the Niners are good. The Eagles, we'll see on Sunday when the Dolphins play the Eagles. The I think the interesting team that we're not talking about the Lions. Yeah. Are, are that sneaky team right now? They are on um, the Bucks. I can't figure. Like, what do we? What, that's what weird team, right? If there's just a team out there that it's like, are they good or were, was that a fraudulent start to their season? Like, are the Bucks, the Bucks actually good? The Bucks are one of those teams. Creamsicle. How do we feel about the Creamsicle jerseys? I love those. I love them in theory. Mm-hmm. I did not. Something about them yesterday. They weren't sitting with me right. I was just like, no. They weren't. 
they weren't the original creamsicles. They were a remake of the creamsicles. You know, it wasn't See? it wasn't the same. There was it less was, white. It, it seemed a new version of them. it. Seemed less. It seemed more plain looking. Like I, I needed some white in there to make the cream pop. Right. I want that cream to pop. I'm looking it it's up right too now. Little orange, not yeah. enough orange creamsicle. Yeah. Uh, man, do I love a creamsicle too? Do you really? Oh, I do. Like yeah. the the treat. Those are your favorites. <laughs> I, I go toasted almond, chocolate eclair. I mean, I wouldn't yeah. say it's my Strawberry favorite. Strawberry shortcake. Right. It's just it really? brings me, it brings me back. Strawberry shortcake. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. I would say that's my favorite. Are we talking if we're talking like ice cream truck style like ice good creams? humor pops? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I go strawberry shortcake. I go toasted almond. Creamsicle is like when I was like, it brings me back to a time. Creamsicle brings me back to when I was six. Like I wouldn't probably eat one nowadays, but it just brings me back to a time. Mikey, I'm going to blow your mind. You know, they don't have toasted almonds down here. They don't. They don't make them anymore. What do you mean? They don't make like good. Tell me it's not true. No, I I, I refuse to believe that. I'm on the blogs every day when it comes to this (laughs) stuff. I am there. I am in the trenches. Really? No, they stopped making them and they apologized for it. Why? Like what was the reason? Yeah, because I what was their reason? Bring them back in three years and charge an extra five dollars. <laughs> I'll buy all of them. I mean, <laughs> limited edition. <laughs> they can mark them up even more if they want. I'll still buy them. <laughs> Has Darius Slayton been a giant for forty years? Yes. I mean, that's just yes. that's yes. all that guy I was like that. I feel like I was in high school and that guy was was a giant. He played with a money tumor. I also. Like. <laughs> I was a. Uh, I was. Uh, Why'd you just point at him? I mean, it's just a good draw. It's just a good name. It's a good name draw. But only if you jump off sides, we pointed him. That's yeah. what we just decided. Did anybody else right. during the NBC broadcast preview, uh, the pregame? I'm like kind of in my kitchen, half listening to the pregame, and they're like, Taylor is starting tonight. And I was like, wow, they're taking this Taylor Swift thing a little too far. I was like, I get it, NBC, right. that you want. But it just then I had the visual of Taylor Swift starting at quarterback for the Giants last right. night. Better than Daniel Jones. That would have got some ratings. No doubt. Speaking of Taylor Swift. So Tyrod Taylor uh, threw you off. Yeah. I was just like, Taylor starting at quarterback tonight. I'm like, this has gone too far. Right. This if is they just were taking- really serious, she would have been at the Jet game with Travis Kelsey, not just showing up when it's in when she's in her, her box. She would have been at the Jet game because Travis was there. Wasn't that Travis at day. the Jets game? Yeah, that's what he said. Yes, that's what yes. I'm saying. Oh, she wasn't yes. there. She should have been there with him. Yeah. She was at the Chiefs game Thursday night. She was not at the Jet game with Travis watching her brother Jay- exactly. watching his brother Jason play. The real winner. So she's not fully committed, Mike, is what you're saying. The that's re- what I'm trying to say. She's only like, committed she when really it's convenient this, for Taylor. Right. Sure. right. Another yes. winner in all of this, we were talking Jason Kelsey, big winner in all of this. Patrick Mahomes' wife getting to sit next to uh, Taylor during these past games, getting this dance with her. I'm seeing yeah. clips. It's just, you know, I think she needed a little PR help. Like, like people, the internet had gotten on her and the brother in the past. So I just feel like this is all good for Patrick Mahomes' wife because she wasn't the most popular on the internet. And I think this Taylor connection is really helping her. But you're not tired of her yet. No, no. That's a, she's instantly right. more likable to me sitting okay. next to Taylor. But all the Kelseys you're tired of. Eh, just I'm tired. No, no, no. See, I'm not tired of Jason Kelsey. I'm tired of how everyone is patronizing. Jason Kelsey and being condescending to his trying to like, oh he, this is he's the one I'm attracted to. It's like don't don't do that. Right. I'm on to you people. Right. Abby, You're my wife. Yeah. <laughs> she's full of it. She's just zagging. She's, terrible taste when, she's zagging when everyone zigs. Why? Because it should be Travis. Because everyone's going Travis and right. she they, like the people want to be like, that's the one I like. Yeah, but Jason, you know, they took different paths. Jason, right. you know, Travis is he's he's single, he's he's living his best life he's he's doing what and they just have two different vibes like Kel- travis is yeah, but, like so hip. i understand travis why... is hip right and and the other one is just more every man but i understand why my wife loves jason you know he's a father he's a good father yeah. he seems like a great husband he's a great person he seems like a loyal person like i get all that <laughs> you're getting See, mad at people for liking the nice the one kelsey's do this <laughs> thing mean... that the cody's have been doing for years in their podcast oh, really? i have my daughter come up to the podcast thing and talk to my 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 dad and it's just it's as adorable as our podcast gets right it doesn't get the traction that the kelsey's get right but i'm telling you we've been doing that move of bring my kid over have a cute moment with grandpa because that's as likable as travis gets is when he's talking to his niece oh no doubt yeah uncle trav ah travi come (laughs) say hi to uncle travi oh i melt i melt when it happens are you tired of the kids yet or i mean (laughs) You said it. I, I asked you. No, now I asked you a question. That's a question. And I'm you not, don't want to answer. I'm not ripping kids. But yeah, come on. Get your own podcast. We found Lucy. She's with us. We'll talk some college football because it gets buried the second the NFL starts every Sunday at 9 30 a.m. Weird. 
Uh, Lucy, I want you to share with the audience what you just shared with us about the uh, the, co- the Oregon game uh, being on at the same time as the Iowa game. Please share your thoughts with the audience. Oregon-Washington was an amazing game. Oh, great. Depending on who you are, Iowa-Wisconsin may have also been an amazing game. But they happened at the exact same time, and they should not be considered the same sport, and they should not be in the same conference at all. That under, though. Oh, every Lucy. time, Chris. Lucy. Every single time. Oh. No team is more loved by gamblers than the Iowa Hawkeyes. <laughs> Wait, so how many picks has Lucy given you this year? Oh, dozens. Really? And she's well above 500. I mean, I think last week was like her first. Last week was really bad. That was like the only week she didn't crush it, though. This right. week she had a winning record. Before that, I think we were like nine and four for the year. She's just well above profit so far. And, and it is every week. She basically, she kind of like, uh-oh. What happened? Flem bomb. She oh. puts a caveat on it every week. She's always like, please. This is what football does to you. She I mean, like, if you'd like to do this to yourself, right. the Iowa under is there for you. And I take it every week and it's always a joy. Okay. So she's well it's above 500. Wait, but you're well above 500. Do you take the Iowa under every single week? Every single week. Yeah. Uh, Wisconsin is a gimme. You can give me. Right now, I would put money on the under to hit for the next five years against Wisconsin. I don't I don't need to know anything about those teams. I would absolutely take that. I believe it's Iowa, Minnesota this week. Right. That's another game. Okay. Every remaining game on the Iowa schedule, I will be hammering the she, under. She had me on North Carolina minus three, betting against my local hometown team here. But hey, nice. it hit, baby. All right, we'll get to Lucy, uh, Lucy or Goosey in just a second here because Carolina may or may not be one of the teams that I ask her about this week. Where are you right now, though, Lucy? I am actually back in Iowa. I am in Coralville. We were out here for the Iowa women's basketball team. They played a football state a game in the football stadium. Uh, 55,000 people showed up and it broke a record. It was unbelievably awesome. It's one of the coolest events I've ever been oh, to. Nice. 55,000, huh? Yeah, for it's there've never been that many people ever at a women's basketball game and it was amazing. Um obviously Caitlin was great. The crowd was awesome. It was just an exhibition game, but it was one of the coolest experiences I've ever had. Uh and Thursday you were at the Colorado uh, Friday you were at the Colorado game? Well, yeah, for the first half. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I I may have made a crucial error. Yeah. And left early. Yes. Without the obviously was it planning on stanford coming back and winning no one was um, right so it went it went kind of bad for me yeah but that's uh, my own fault i'm that, not no excuses that's on me listen i'm gonna get you off the hook right now because i left early do you remember the heat won a a second nba championship against the spurs yes and uh, ray allen hit the shot <laughs> i left before the shot lucy i left before overtime i left before <laughs> regulation was over Everyone's been calling me Lou Gotts all weekend. <laughs> now you know why. Did you now try to Did you try to get back in? Did you try to break back in like Stugatz did? No. No, so here's the thing. I did not try to break back in because you- no, I knew the ticket policy. I knew they were not letting me back in. Everyone else tried to break back in. So I was walking against the grain because everyone heard a roar from the from the arena and started to run back in. And I and I kept telling people as they passed me, you're not getting back so in. Good. You're not getting back in. You're not getting back in. And none of them got back in. I mean, I got to my parking spot, which was a so great good. spot right, right on Biscayne. I got home. I watched the game. I taped it, you know. But I regret missing that. But, Lucy, I did tell you. I told you this would happen. We discussed this. They built up the odds so much. That 60 minutes goes out there, they do a piece on Dion. Great. The second they stumble, I told you, people were going to come down on Dion. He went from 60 minutes to Saturday Night Live doing a sketch on him. I I told you, we built him up too much, Lucy. You know that. No, 100%. I mean, we talked about it then. Like, I I still want to give Dion credit because Colorado was better than I thought. It's something that kind of took me by surprise going to that game i had never been to a colorado game i'd actually never been to a pac-12 game before Mm. and the atmosphere there like truthfully wasn't great like there were fifty five thousand people there they sold out the stadium but you it was a tough sell like it didn't have the football tradition that i've seen going to sec games the big 10 games for so for him to get world-class athletes there is incredibly impressive and they've already exceeded my expectations for this year but he was never Nick Saban this season. Colorado was never someone worth betting to win the national championship, which so many people did. Mm-hmm. It was one of those moments where people, like, they dove in head first, and it was like, you need to wait a second. This is a dip-your-toe-in type of situation. Ooh. It's going to be a rough year for Colorado. And that Stanford game, 
I did get to see the second half. I watched it. <laughs> Just not in person. Right. <laughs> As you say SNL like it's a bad thing. Like that's when the, the, you I'm jump just... the shark. He's that's just like you still he's on the rise still to me. Yeah. When I see SNL, that is just like you are you're popular. Right. Is what that says. Are you doing the whole like Zion shoe thing? Like any publicity is good publicity. I'm just saying I, I don't look at him being spoofed on SNL as like up oh, that's that it's over the hill now and to me that's just the star is still rising snl i i think i agree with you i think it's more of when i said like don't don't jump in don't jump in on colorado like if you want to be all in on dion that's totally fine and his yes. star power is going to continue to grow it doesn't matter if colorado loses every game the rest of the season he's on every commercial during every college football saturday like he is going to continue to grow and rise and as colorado will inevitably improve it will happen but for people to come in and say you know year one he was going to be the best you know coach of all time and all these things <laughs> it was it was a little ridiculous and i think dan said pretty much all of those things they, yeah. they were making fun of how <laughs> he can sound ridiculous sometimes yeah like about he just no matter even if they're losing oh listen it, i love dion like what he's done during these losses is better than what he's done during the wins like the way he treats his kids the yeah. lessons that he's teaching his kids off the field it's fantastic yeah like he really He's a great guy. I'm just saying we. I'm not blaming Dion. It right. has nothing to do with Dion. Kind of like me with Jason Kelsey. Yeah, it's not the, It's not Kelsey I'm mad at. No. It's the people's reaction. The, the Like Lucy said, the media, mostly Dan, built him up so much, <laughs> and now we're taking him down. And that, like, right, that's right. that's that's unfortunate. I'm not certain we should be doing that yeah. this early. Yeah, maybe I left early in protest of Dan. People don't, <laughs> people don't bring that point up. Uh, it's a fair point. All right, are you ready for Lucy or Goosey? Ooh, are you ready? I exciting. am. I don't have – I'm in a hotel, so I don't have anything to hold up. So I'll do L for lucy it sort of looks like a g okay nice all right very clever this is fun <laughs> okay uh Quick here we go feet. i just got a few for you uh carolina north carolina beat the canes they're undefeated that team looks really good the defense looked really good north carolina lucy or goosey I'm going to go Lucy on this one because I was not super sold on Carolina. The only win I was impressed by was App State, and I think they still kept it a little too close. I can say very good App State team. The reason I'm going Lucy on this is I watched that Miami game. I was so impressed by their defense. Drake May looks pretty bad in the first half, and Carolina's defense was what kept them in that first half of the game, and that has not been the case. Carolina, for the past few years, has been the reverse Iowa, where their offense is amazing and their <laughs> defense is like a crime against humanity. They're much vastly improved this season. Carolina's very good, but they do have Duke remaining on their schedule. They'll get somebody probably tough in the ACC championship game. I'm excited for this Carolina team, though. They are good. All right. Uh, let's go to Alabama here. One loss. That loss came a few weeks back. They went back to Milrow as their quarterback. He's played well. Uh, Alabama, one loss. Lucy or Goosey? Uh, I'm going to go Lucy. Um, I talked about what the issue with Alabama was a few weeks ago. I think Jalen Milrow is fine. I think every once in a while he'll have a crazy overthrown ball to a receiver where you're like, oh, my God. And then the next play is the pass of his life. Right. It's <laughs> He's a freshman. There's yes. going to be growing pains. There's going to be adjustments. The only thing that still concerns me is the Alabama offensive line. They've got a guy on there who was committed to Iowa and didn't go. He's a turnstile right now. And it's – I watched the Arkansas game. They had three sacks in the first half given up against them. Alabama is not protecting Milrow whatsoever. And – they're just lucky that right now they're in a year where the SEC West and the SEC isn't as tough as it is because they have a major glaring obvious weakness, and it is that offensive line. All Everything right. else they're great at. All right, let's go to uh, Oregon. I know they lost this weekend. I know you're Lucy on Washington in the top four. They all rolled this weekend, so I don't need to ask you about those. But uh, Oregon lost. I think both those teams, for me, they're two of the four best teams I've seen in the country this year. Both teams should be in the college football playoff. I don't know if that's the case, but Lucy or Goosey on Oregon. Uh, I got to go Lucy on this one. I know Oregon lost. They lost because of a missed kick. I wouldn't even say they lost because of a missed kick. I'd say they lost because of some coaching errors. That Dan Landing was more aggressive in spots where he should have been playing it a little safe and not aggressive enough in spots he was playing it safe. Oregon is a phenomenal team. I think that if that game were played in Eugene, Oregon would have won that game. Their defense looks good. Bo Nix is amazing. Those were two phenomenal football teams, and I'm hoping – and I don't think it's going to happen because the Pac-12 is right now about to enter the thick of their schedule where everyone will cannibalize each other. But I hope we get lucky enough to have Oregon-Washington in the Pac-12 championship game. Lucy or Goosey, Desmond Howard chanting Big Penix energy on college game day. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to go... Penix? 
It, he, it, didn't say that. he changed the the, the pronunciation. To what, Chris? To Penix. <laughs> okay, yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go hard goosey. This the G looks really hard goosey on that. Um, what? Yeah. That Why? is that is the Pat McAfee of full effect taking over college game. Desmond Howard would have never done that two years ago. <laughs> he would have never done that, and to do that with Lee Corso right there, could you right. do that in front of your grandparents? <laughs> and it was just like the crowd was just like not behind it. Just he's gonna bring <laughs> that big Phoenix energy. He's gonna bring <laughs> that big Phoenix energy. <laughs> And then he just like kept dancing while he, and then it was just like awkward. And then what like, was Corso doing? And it was just, I, I wasn't looking because I was cringing. You were. <laughs> it was hard to watch. It's hard to look when you cringe. You're right. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> so you're, you're goosey on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, very goosey. Okay, just goosey uh, on all of College Game Day. Uh, Penix Jr. won the uh, he won the Heisman Trophy. Penix, uh, uh, Penix. sorry, Penix. He won the Heisman <laughs> Trophy. <laughs> he won the Heisman, right? Yeah. There are Heisman moments. Yeah. He had his Heisman moment, right? He absolutely did. Caleb Williams against Notre Dame this weekend looked absolutely terrible. So as as you know, Michael Penix Jr. rose. Caleb Williams fell, which helps his case. Um, I think it was really important for. Anybody who had been watching Washington football this year knew what he was capable of, knew what he was doing. But people don't watch Washington football because they're late games. They're on the West Coast. They're sometimes televised on a network you can't find. So now that it was a national stage against a great team that everybody watched, it feels like he's the clear Heisman favorite. And there's really not even someone else you want to throw into the conversation right now that's not him. All right. We have 30 seconds here. Last one. Oregon State. Lucy or Goosey? Oregon State is interesting. It's a tough one. I, I think they're a good team, but I'm going goosey, not because they're a bad team, but because they are in a conference that is simply going to be impossible. If Oregon State were playing in the Big 12, I know they wish that was the case, they would win that conference. But right now, you share a state with Oregon. You have Washington State, Washington. You have the most insane, difficult teams around you. That Oregon is Oregon State is a very good team. They don't have a ton of talent, but they recruit in a way that they know what works for them. They get what they need. It's not the five-star, but it's a real developmental program. It's just not going to be enough against these teams that have so much talent or are just light years ahead of everyone. Time! Anyone in any conference. <laughs> you just timed her. <laughs> it was time like 12 seconds ago. <laughs> Lucy, we love you. Uh, <laughs> we will talk to you later this week and, of course, next week right here on God Plus Football. Mikey A., how do we explain to uh, to Chris Cody here, who's done a great job filling in for Billy? Billy's... Uh, Fantastic. Yes, he has jury duty. Mm. Um, how do we explain, and we all agree that we do not want Billy. Well, no, we do want Billy on the jury. Oh, we're not certain. The right? jury's out. Depends yeah. if you did it or not. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, look at you. I'll be here, all, well, I'll be here today. Yeah. All right. <laughs> but you're sharp <laughs> early in the afternoon, my yeah. friend. I got to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> this early evening. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Uh, what does Billy do here with the bets? I, I have no idea. Billy's big board something, Mikey. Yeah, explain it to Chris because the audience has grown to love Billy doing this. Mm -hmm. Now Chris is Chris has the responsibility of providing them with three picks on tonight's game. Yeah, so it's Billy's best bets big boards brought to you by, and then we got to find that sponsor. Hmm. You got to insert a sponsor here, right? Um, this is and then you're well, gonna give. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, was just, you're ah. gonna give three picks uh for tonight's game yeah that starts in a few hours yeah, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> now and billy's we, we big, will all bet them billy's big bet board you're... is going to be called this week chris's can't miss conception really i don't know just just trying to do a ccc yeah, but thing could you think of a good name uh, just <laughs> can't miss yeah. kick come check out these conceptions by chris okay. all right all right kirsten likes it that all works right. okay all right the first bet. copyright right but you don't have a big board or anything do you no, a dry erase a, board or it's a big screen right. Right. A i have a computer because it's c right a computer uh-huh all right michael gallup under three and a half receptions really yeah huh not a big gallup guy he's gonna be more uh walking more like michael walk no? All right. Oh, no, no, just let the bad joke sit there, Mike EA. <laughs> let it sit there. I mean, my God. The second pick in Chris's cool conceptions on his computer, 
Eckler over 13 and a half longest rush. Wow, I like that. Mm -hmm. Eckler told us last week he's 99% certain he will play uh, tonight. Well, so I yep. hope that's 100. And he will join us tomorrow after, no uh, after no the game. No injury de designation on the uh, fantasy apps. Okay. That's how I judge it. All right, so you have Eckler over 13 and a half yards rushing. And the final pick. That's one rush, by the way, right? Ro his okay. longest of the night will be over okay. 13 and a half. All right. Uh, the third pick on Chris's cool conceptions on his computer. Brought to you by. Brought to you by mm -hmm. yes. Cool. Mm -hmm. Kool-Aid. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. It starts with a K. Uh, CD Lamb <laughs> to score it because I was trying to find C things it. in his yeah. system. All right. CD Lamb. <laughs> C D Lamb to score a touchdown. Right. Book it. Michael Gallup under three and a half receptions. Eckler to rush over 13 and a half yards. His longest rush. CD Lamb to score a touchdown. Book it. All right. That should be the name of the segment. Book it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a good segment, right? Yeah. Can we do that? Didn't we do that already? We have. We've done it all. <laughs> I've done it we all. Did, we did a segment called Book It at one point. Listen, when you have done this for as long as I've done it, okay, 20 some odd years, you've done, you've done every segment. Yeah. Right? There is no new segment for me, okay? Yeah. Speaking of top five quarterbacks through week six. Let's go. <laughs> How about <Whoa>. that? <laughs> That's why I'm here. <laughs> is it week six? I have no idea where yeah. we are. What week are we in, Mikey? Three and three, the Jets, this right? Week, week six. six. All right, here we go. Number five, Jared Goff. Oh, mm hmm. I am with you, Chris. I think the Lions, if there's a team that is going to surprise either the Niners or the Eagles and bounce them out of the playoffs and find themselves in the net, uh, an NFC championship game, it's going to be the Lions. I'm yeah. not certain the Lions aren't the best, most complete NFL team uh, in the league this year. I'm looking at some, I'm trying to look up some Super Bowl odds here. Let's yeah. see, see where they're at. Oh, the Lions are probably up there, which yeah. I cannot believe I'm saying that in my lifetime, that the Lions would be one of the favorites to win the Super Bowl, but they, they are. They are, they're by the Dolphins, the Chiefs, the, the Niners, the Eagles, and the Cowboys, right. and the Bills are all ahead of them. So they're okay. still like, they're like eighth on right. this list. So like, they're good value there. I agree. Like, if, Maybe the Jags, too. I'm trying to look. If you're looking for value. The Jags are a good play, too. Jags and yeah. Lions are, would yes. be the value picks for Super Bowl winners. We'll see what happens with Trevor Lawrence. I think he was injured. We'll, yeah. uh, and I know he's getting looked at today, so we'll find out what happens with him. Uh, number four, a mm -hmm. rookie has cracked the top five. I love this kid. C.J. Stroud. Wow. He's good. A rookie. Mike, yeah, he's good. I mean, Sims has never said things about a rookie quarterback that he said about C.J. Stroud. He loves him. I love him. He's good. The Texans are pretty good. I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm not sold. I don't know if he's top five. That's a Just bit through strong. Week six. Okay. All right. Just a little strong. All Seems right. a little strong. All right. Number three he plays tonight. Justin Herbert. Yeah. He's good. Do we add the sounder in post? Because without the sounder, these lists. I blame Fuentes. <laughs> I blame Fuentes. Billy. <laughs> <laughs> I could just do it. <laughs> Let's point fingers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely Kirsten's fault. <laughs> Whose fault is it? Can we take phone calls yet? I yeah. mean, that was the whole reason Billy wanted to do this was to take phone calls. <laughs> we haven't taken a call through six weeks. Number two, Kirk Cousins. Uh, oh, man. there it is. It just, it just hits. <laughs> it feels better. Oh, yes, it does. Uh, I know the Vikings are two and four, but it's not Kirk's fault. I no. can tell you that he's having one of the great all-time seasons for a quarterback <laughs> right, and a team a, that, that is two and four. There you go. That's <laughs> a good little caveat there. The day he retires, he starts just walking to camp. Five years. Take yes. Five years. It will take him exactly five That's years it. to get there, and then he'll be in. You don't yeah. think so? No. Nah. I don't, I don't not think so. <laughs> First ballot. All right, number one up. Two up. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey, why are you getting mad? He's the best quarterback in football right now. It, it's the joke that's that, uh, that gets me mad. I'm it's sorry. not necessarily really. The that's right the game. joke that got you mad. Not the Gallup joke. <laughs> Carolina Panthers plus 50,000. Chris is a guest. You know better. Uh, yeah, he doesn't care. <laughs> uh, I had to rewind, Mikey, uh, towards the end of the Jet game when it was over. I had to rewind to make sure what I saw happen. Uh, did you have this? <laughs> I had to make sure. Did the Jets actually win this game? I had to rewind it. I wanted to make sure. Uh, they did, by the way. They won the game. I could not believe it. Uh, Mikey, is that the most shocked you have been? As a Jet fan watching watching the Jets play, because for me, it uh, it was I could not believe we beat the Philadelphia Eagles. I called my daughter, like, <laughs> I mean, crying. Yes, is that the best Jets win in a decade? Because it might be. I mean, Monday Night Football, the, the, the open the season wasn't bad. 
Uh, yeah. yeah, but I mean, against Buffalo after like, Rogers gets hurt. Yeah, like but Rogers still got hurt, so that was sitting there. Yeah. That's like, what I mean. That made that makes that win almost more impressive. No, I know. I what understand. the game was supposed to be versus what happened. Right. I mean, I understand. That might be it. Yeah. I understand what Chris is saying. The first game, it was it was you had the punt return for a touchdown, walk off overtime, beat the Bills. Um, They're was, clearly the two biggest wins in franchise history, though. Like we can like, not in franchise the history. They won a Super Bowl. I mean, yeah, you guys are doing that here. It's just like, how big is this? No, the most surprised. Okay, I was I was legitimately surprised. I did not expect us to beat. Yeah, Chris, they're undefeated. I know. <laughs> I mean, like I said earlier, though, they they're kind of fraudulent undefeated team. If you really look at each game the Eagles have played, I know they're that the offensive line is, as Dan says, the best unit in all of football. But outside of that, they've they've been kind of beatable this year. I guess a lot of close games. I guess there is no dominant team in the NFL. Just... <laughs> I mean, there is. There's one. Well. <laughs> I mean, and they and they're missing like six guys on defense. Yeah, I know, but we're not even close. We haven't even hit our stride yet. Minus four on the turnover margin. We are right. Huh? Yeah, but you lo- you lost to Buffalo. I yeah, mean, that's right. fine. <laughs> Gotta lose sometimes. Yeah, that's a good loss. You're saying? I do think the Dolphins are the best team in the NFL. Dude, it's just that offense. Like, I don't even care if their defense. All their defense has to be is slightly above average, and they can win the Super Bowl if two is healthy. Right there, I said it. God, I love football. God bless football, Mikey. A. Can we do it again? Can we just do it like in the middle, or do we do it at the end of the segment? What? Just tell each other God bless football want. again. You can do it whenever God you want. God bless football, God Mikey. Bless a. A. Yeah. God bless football. Yeah. God bless football. It doesn't work as well at the, in the middle Cody. of the segment. No, that's why we open with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, You're the best. What else do I have here? Chris asked me, what do I have to do to be prepared for God bless football? Just watch football? I was, I was like, like, what do you yeah. need for me? Yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah, like, what's the. Do. <laughs> What's the homework assignment here? Watch football? Sometimes got you it. don't even have to. <laughs> I'm on it. <laughs> what are you looking up now? Uh, just, you know, I got notes. Just, you know, well, okay, share did I, the did notes Did I get to Big Penix Energy? Did I do that yet? You did that, yes. I love when you Red Zone that. cuts away from, uh, like, perspective. Right. Like, there was, and it was, I think it was the Patriots-Raiders game where Jim Nance is like, like, a play happens, and he's, I, I just burped, and he goes, Sorry. he goes, I, I, this reminds me of when they played two years ago. Raider, and then in the middle of the sentence, you just hear uh, Scott Hansen go, we go now to Commanders versus Cardinals. And it's just like... You wanted to hear the end it, of the it sentence? Was just like, it was just a funny example of Red Zone having no time for any perspective. We don't give a <laughs> Just give me football plays. I was like, it was just a nice... Uh, tapestry that Jim Nance was weaving. That's what he does. And I was just yes. like listening to it. And all of a sudden, it's like, no time for this. I need Commanders... Commanders and Cardinals just got in past fifty yard line. But that's on you for watching the red zone. That's what the red zone is. That's their job. They're I not know. interested in Jim Nance's stories. But, but can't we just if the, you want to see if you want to hear Jim Nance's stories, watch Jim Nance's can't the cuts, Can't the cuts be just a little less aggressive? Like they're just cutting him no. off mid sentence. Like no. let me let him finish. Let me. I want to know no, what get happened me to the red zone. What happened two years ago when the Raiders played the Patriots? I'm curious. <laughs> and it's just like, nope, Cardinals, Commanders. They just passed the fifty yard line. I need to see Josh Dobbs right now. Oh. I have a Chris Cody observation. I'll throw out there. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah. angry are you if you're a London NFL fan? That Germany is getting Chiefs Dolphins, and you got you got those garbage games. Like they, you got Jags been doing Bills this for Mike, years, Mikey. You got Jags Bills. That's a decent game. Yeah, I mean, was it though? Yeah, no. But uh, Germany is a pretty terrible game. Germany's killing it. That though. Germany are, game right, though. Yes. <laughs> Germany gets Dolphins Chiefs. <laughs> that is what a game, man. Put the kids to right. Even though it's what time is the game at? Wake the kids up. Nine thirty in the morning. Put them down for an early nap. <laughs> put them again to bed. Wake them up especially early so they can have a weirdly early nap. What time do your kids wake up? Keep them up, up till 4 a.m. Like 7 a.m. So I, I think for that game, you got to wake them up at 5. Yes. So they're ready to nap by 9.30. A little 9 a.m. Yeah. nap yeah. yeah. A little nappy poo. Are you going to do that? <laughs> My kid doesn't nap anymore. You're not getting up at 5. No, it's terrible. <laughs> they don't nap once they're past like 2 years old. That's what they don't tell you. They don't tell you that part. You didn't know that? No, they, they, I always assumed kids nap. Right. They don't do it. Do you nap? No, no, I do. On today, I'm going to. You nap? Well, well no, like, you're not. No, tonight. No. <laughs> no. no. Tonight when I go to, I call sleeping at night napping. It's weird. <laughs> A little pregame nap. <laughs> God bless football, Mikey. A. <laughs> Whenever there's silence or he's uncomfortable, he just blurts out, "God bless football." <laughs> 
<laughs> the dolphins are good. <laughs> Let's go, baby. God bless, bless football, football, Chris Cody. God bless football, Mikey A. God bless football, Stu Gats. <laughs> <laughs>